Okay, hey guys, got you all here back here on the uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the Colorado.edu site, Colorado State.edu, the uh, Ram Slider site, and I switched it up a little instead of um, putting it on the this is the Ghost East. So now we're picking this thing up. Doesn't matter what time of the day, I can pick it up on this Goes East. And instead of the geo color, which I showed it to you at previously, this is the geo color. I tried selecting some of these different uh, bands, and it pulled up this natural color humistat, and it's showing up similar to that on this, also this red, green, blue air mesh humistat. So here we go. Check this out comes through about 4 UTC four thirty UTC what's interesting is it's got this reflection and they have the uh, pixelations a little different it's white instead of black so you can see these pixels are really not hiding anything but they're just extend out a little bit so the circumference of this thing somewhere in here something like that <clears throat> but what's interesting look how it's reflecting light same deal if you switch it over to the Himawari 8 on the same uh, setting natural color humus humid sat which uh, turns out to be a European Satellites, they must have maybe uh, a satellite parked up there along with the GOES or part of the GOES array, weather satellite array that is um, from Europe. But anyway, check this out. Same deal. Well, the pixelation is black, but something, we got it reflecting light. So, I mean... <clears throat> I would say probably the whole southern hemisphere could probably see this thing if they have clear skies. And it must be pretty freaking huge. And what I think it's probably reflecting uh, sunlight, which is behind the planet, of course. But it's managing to hit this object, maybe because it's not directly behind the earth. And uh, it's reflecting like like a moon I'll put it in play you can see it here this one starts around uh, 1400 UTC I think it was there it comes 14 something UTC <laughs> it just slides on through holy smoke <coughs> Let me back this up. There it is. Whoa, this is freaky, man. I wish I lived in the southern hemisphere. I'd definitely be checking this thing out. People should be getting some shots of this. So, you got any friends in the southern hemisphere, particularly in uh, Australia and New Zealand, this thing should be showing up big time. Or in southern South America. Get them out there and uh, take some pictures of this thing. This is freaking crazy, man. It even shows up on the goes. I played around with the goes. See how they're flashing through. Put it on a different. Uh, put it on the visible red spectrum. Works on a couple different spectrums. So I'll put the links in the description box. So you can play around with it yourself. Uh, pulled up geospace, same deal. We got pretty much of an equalization of pressure between the nemesis behind the earth and our solar wind coming from our sun. Virtually no pressure. So this is a full 48 hours where there's been a complete standoff pretty much. Pulled up ACE, 
And then we got a big gap here now. We got a little gap here. That's the one I showed you this morning, which is about an hour. And then as we go through, now we got a pretty big one here, about oh, a little bit before 0100. Extending out a little bit past 0600. So that's a full seven hour gap. And there's got to be some type of an object that's um, hampering the ACE from uh, collecting the solar wind data <clears throat> parked out in front somewhere. I pulled up the Discover, which is out there in the same Lagrange point, L1, and we have no gaps. So, like I pointed out in other videos, both these satellites, the ACE and the Discoverer, are parked out here at the L1 Lagrange point, which uh, just means that it can remain stationary in that fixed orbit position 24-7 without any effort due to uh, gravitation or whatever, electromagnetic influences as well, I'm sure. There's the Earth, there's the Moon, so this is 930,000 miles in front of the Earth, which is supposed to be our early warning satellites to detect anything that's coming from the sun that might you know be harmful to the earth and you can get as much 15 to 60 minute warning which isn't much so I mean I guess it helps them to maybe dial down some of these weather satellites and stuff like that around here maybe and harden them up a little somehow whatever they do to uh, minimize any damage coming from the solar wind so anyway, these two are out there, Ace and Discover. The Ace has been up there for, for quite some time. I'm not sure exactly how long, but the Discover one was just put up in 2016, June or July, I think it was. And it's a newer satellite. It's meant to replace the Ace, I guess, once the Ace maybe uh, wears out. So these, these guys are up here at the same L1 point, but I'm sure they're not. Well, they can't be in the same position otherwise. We were seeing similar gaps before. So they got to be fairly close. But right now, these gaps showing up on ACE, whatever the object is, it's uh, blocking this data stream or the solar wind stream coming to the ACE satellite, whatever objects are not that close to ACE, so I'm saying probably these things are probably pretty darn close to the ACE satellite would be my guess, and I bet you they're going to pass fairly soon, within a week or two maybe, or else they're going to start showing up on the Discover, there's going to have to be some gaps on here, see the solar wind speed's really low, it's getting down around below 350, the phi angle, we still have a connection, pretty much of a direct connect behind the Earth, because anything above 180 indicates a connection to another solar body behind the Earth. If it's 180, it's a direct Sun to Earth connection. If it's zero, it's a direct Earth to Sun connection. And it's been riding up here for quite a while now. And sometimes with some great fluctuation, right now it's fairly calm and it's uh, pretty much got a solid connection. Well, I tried to dip down a little bit there, close to 180, and it's back up again, it's dipping down again. <clears throat> so this is what I'm talking about, the phi angle, this is the interplanetary magnetic field lines. That's what that phi angle indicates. That's blue. And it's the tutorial, Solar Ham tutorials in the description box, along with that L1 Lagrange point. Everything's in there. You guys just got to start accessing it. So we, all, we have like nine planets, one sun. Should be nine interplanetary magnetic field lines. So basically they connect from the sun to the earth and to all the other planets. Now, as you can see, we got well more than nine blue field lines, which indicates another further evidence of a second sun, which would be Nemesis, and said to have about seven planets. 
So if you add 7 plus R9, that's 16 times 2 suns. That's 32 interplanetary magnetic field lines, which, um, you know, it could easily come up with 32, probably if we studied this thing long enough or close to it anyway. The missing time still here. It's showing up. I still, it's still showing up in this run. It'll show up at the, uh, yes, last night at the 19 or 17:58 position, which would be uh, around 12:58 Eastern Daylight Time. See, it's coming up here. 14. I showed you this in the video this morning. 15. And it's going to jump from 1958 all the way up to 1044 the next day. So 1017. So that's like 15 hours that they deleted from these computer simulations. So something crazy happened there, to be sure. And these radiation belts, though. Whatever happened, it wasn't really reflected on here because here you can see 1017 past the 1958 point, and they're still running. And they're not really picking up anything. Well, I mean, rather than the crazy uh, high levels of uh, electrons, high energy electrons and low energy electrons that are bathed in the planet. Hmm. So I'll take you back here and let you see this thing play through. Got it set on the most number of images. And the, the lesser time is the slower it plays through. If you stick it up here, it like zips along real quick. And I have it dialed back to speed as low as can go. And here you can see there's that uh, I would submit probably a planet coming through and then here it is on the Himawari start that plane again there it goes strange stuff guys um, definitely try to get this to some people that might be able to see it anyone below the uh, in the southern hemisphere really could probably see this thing they have uh, clear skies and maybe get some pictures of this of this at at night that would be sweet so anyway uh, I'm gonna leave you with that and uh, take care God bless peace and uh, I'm out mm -hmm.